In this episode, we travel to the swamp to get our hands on bauxite, plan and build our first aluminum factory from scratch, and gather all the necessary parts for aluminum sheets and aluminum casings. Yo, hello everybody, welcome back to Prone to Play, a Let's Play series of Satisfactory. In the last episode we finalized our oil platform, bringing it up to version 2 and now producing a power output of 18,250 power megawatts with 49 fuel generators. And today we are taking a final look at this. I did some cosmetics again, color coded everything correctly since we had to replace and redo most of the fuel generators or at least some of them in the last episode because we messed up. If you are interested in this, feel free to check out the last episode. But yeah, now everything is about to be completed. The patterns on the floor are done and I am happy with this. I had the color coding of some of the grip metals in black, which is why the patterns in the last episode were sometimes so dark. But now everything is white and uh, for the grip metal itself it doesn't make any difference but for the patterns it does so now everything is highly visible because color coded in white. And um, uh, when I set the power switches up in every line of the fuel generators I actually was not sure if they were come in handy or not but actually they really do because when you switch one of them off you see the capacity and the production of each line so for troubleshooting this is just perfect for example when I started this up to its full potential I was able to troubleshoot every single line and there were some hiccups I think I forgot one power line or so um, so yeah this is really good for double checking if everything is working properly and I really can recommend to work with power switches as much as possible Especially when there will be new priority power switches in update 8. Coffee Stain Studios just released some other teasers and some uh, dev talks where they go into detail with this. I will link it in the description. Ma make sure to check this out because this is some good stuff coming up in the future. You can also see that I added another hypertube cannon. I think I have to extend this a little bit because for now this is just 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 16 entrances, 16 segments and I have to use some fuel in order to reach the central storage with this but for now it's fine and today we are actually not going to go back to the central storage directly because I have to show you quite some stuff and we are taking a break in the swamp. Whoops, this was a little bit high. Hold please. Yeah, the fog is lifting again, slowly. And you see that we are not that far away from the oil plant, but I was very, very busy in between episodes to prepare for today. Because today we are finally going to deal with aluminum production and for that we have to extract bauxite. And right here is actually a spot where we have two bauxite nodes directly next to each other. One normal one and one impure one. I was actually considering to di um, dive into these ones. I have never used them but for now 180 bauxite is completely doing fine for us because yeah we don't have that much um, other parts that we will need further down the producing line so yeah 180 is fine for now for starting up and for getting our hands on aluminum stuff for the first time and if necessary we can expand later on anyways so we will hook this up later, but I just wanted to show you that this is where our bauxite will come from. And I built it on some miner houses. This actually lined up 
almost perfectly. Just had to use one tiny ramp in order to bring them up together. And they will merge directly after being extracted and coming out from the miner houses, being lifted up here, where I built another train station, which is called Swamps or Swarms Bauxite. And you also see another detail or another thing that I added to our train logistics. First, I made the track that is beyond this point a double track where each side is dedicated for going into one direction. So on the right side it will always go into the yeah, right side is basically the driving side. So this side will go to the desert and this one is going the other way. And since we have only one train going to the oil plant currently and I also, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, have not considered expanding the tracks to a second one or a, a by track, how, how you ever, however you want to say it. Um, this is quite narrow at some spots, so I decided to split this up from this point. And now we have the possibility to run multiple trains on the same train network. And because we are using multiple trains in the future on the same train network, we have also implemented signals, path signals and block signals, mostly block signals, because what this does is it divides the whole train network into different segments. Let me just copy one of these so that you show the color coding. So each two block signals are dedicating the train network and uh, splitting it into different blocks. And whenever a block is occupied by a train, it will be showing on the signal and communicating to other trains that there's currently no trespassing here so that these don't collide. And because we will set up another train, either in this one or at, le at latest in the next one, um, this was necessary in order to avoid collision in the future. And this is why it's completely safe to put up another train and ride along this network. And as you see, as soon as I pass this block signal, it will turn red. Just did. So if this train would be right behind me, it would know that it cannot drive further at the moment and has to wait until the next block is cleared. And this will be necessary as soon as we put down our second train, which we will do today, because this bauxite train station is dedicated to deliver bauxite to our aluminum factory that we are actually going to build together today. Because, yeah, I have set up the foundations, the basic elements for this um, as much prepared as possible, but it will be very basic, so I think we will do this together and get our hands on hopefully aluminum sheets and aluminum casings today already. Alright, back at the central storage. Um, we will head out to the dedicated place where we are producing aluminum today um, very soon, but I just wanted to give you a quick update what happened in between episodes. I am <laughs> collecting the stuff that Inel brings us outside here so that you can get a little overview what lizard doggos are capable of finding. For example, some flower petals that are actually useful for the um, color cartridges, for the patterns on the floors, for example. At first I was dumping them all the time, but now I really need them and we'll stock these up in the future for potential color coding or patterns on the ground. Mycelia is also a thing. Um, yeah, and then some raw ore, sam ore for example, quartz, limestone, leaves. So mostly basic stuff. I don't want to insult him, but yeah, sometimes very loose, useful things and you saw him uh, bringing a purple slug in the past as well. So sometimes it's very handy. I also changed one of the 
manufacturers down here because we have I think 400 500 supercomputers now um, which is why I changed this recipe to modular engines again we have so many smart platings producing that we um, are dumping them anyways so I thought in order to maybe even yeah put up the output of um, coupon points for the awesome sink or maybe prepare them for the future I produce some modular engines because I think we will need them for the project parts in the future anyways and we will need a bunch of it so I just let this run in the background as well. So I extended the train network also apart from being double sided. Oh yeah just one last thing that I wanted to show you. Um, I meant I mentioned the bending of railways in the last episode not being completely straightforward and you can actually see the perfect comparison over here. Seems like I didn't notice that I dragged on the bending and curving of the railway track over here and you can see these yeah not being straight and the direct comparison on the right side I did it properly so I think I will clean this up in the future and redo this so that it's completely straight as well. It's not that big of a deal for me, but yeah, the more clean a place can be, the better. Let me actually stock up on some fuel. On our first basic refinement, I think I will also change the plastic output to, fuel pa uh, to package fuel again, because we currently have no production of this, but we have more than enough, way more than enough plastic actually. So yeah, we will have to taken care of this again as well. And here's just some little extension of the train network to our dedicated spot where we will build our aluminum factory today. And I hope it will make sense along the process why I chose to build it here. I also extended our power, um, conveyor bus that used to bring only coal from the desert to this cliff and feed it into coal generators. But later, hopefully very soon, we will bring some other stuff here as well. New train station, coal coast because of the coal generator site. And it's actually cool to come back here because I haven't been here in a long time. The only thing I did here in the past was I got the comment that batteries actually can be hooked up alongside each other um, just similar as lightings so usually you only have one connection point for battery but if you hook them up together you can simply yeah, have the continuous power lines so I changed that thank you very much for the advice and before we had power poles here in the center but now it looks way cleaner and yeah thank you for these tips I am always appreciating these and implementing into my save file although I'm not always showing it but yeah since we are here already now I just wanted to show this really quick all right enough talking let's get to business let's go build our aluminum factory and the plan is that the necessary parts or resources will be transported from up here either from our main bus or from our train station. The train station will only bring bauxite and all the other stuff that's not prepared here and has to uh, be brought here will be coming from this conveyor bus. So I think this is also the starting point since our resources will be sitting here. And today I actually want to try out something else that I have seen at Waterin Place because when, especially when building refineries, since these are so big and these have yeah, more complicated um, logistics with pipelines as well as conveyor belts, he actually sinks them in a little bit into the foundation. So he builds, for example, a walkway on the edge and then you can build a refinery on here, have the logistics a little bit more hidden, maybe even build a walkway out of glass 
alongside so you can um, walk above and look how everything's going underneath. So I think I will try this today. I have not decided yet how high the foundation will be and how low the machines will get um, placed on this foundation. But for now, let's work with the normal place and care about the cosmetics later. Because the first thing that we will have to deal with is producing a luminous solution out of bauxite. We will get 180 bauxite to this place. So we will need two refineries and one of them being underclocked by 50%. And for that, we will also have to add water, currently 270. So let's place some water extractors as well. Let's hook them up here at the edge. Like this, and maybe like that. Although we are currently needing 270 water, there will be a water output later down the, pros uh, the production line, so I'm very positive that two water refineries will be sufficient. And we could do it, for example, like this. But I will care about the logistics later. Let's put down the machines first, shall we? All right. We also have uh, an output of 75 silica with this in total. And the next thing that we have to do is convert the aluminum solution into aluminum scrap. I am missing motors. God damn it. Okay, but just for the sake of demonstration, maybe let's put this here, maybe a little bit further, and I will bring the motors for the last refinery again later. And we have aluminum scrap, but we only produce 180 aluminum solution. Yes, 120 plus 60. We have to add coal, actually, and this is why I chose this spot here, because not only do we have enough water, or every water amount that we need in the world provided here, but we also have another impure node that we have not tapped in until now, with the minor unused just standing here and I will actually overclock this to 150% extracting 90 coal and feeding it into this refinery in order to produce 270 aluminum scrap as well as 90 meters cubed of water per minute and we will refeed the output of water back into this network and make sure that this will get drained prioritized somehow, I don't know, maybe working with valves or something. But this is the plan. And then we have 270 aluminum scrap to work with. And the next step is to convert the scrap with silica into aluminum ingots. And we have to use foundries in order to do this. So let's build a foundry and take a look how we have to deal this. Okay, we are extracting 200 or we are producing 270 aluminum scrap. So we can take three foundries in order to deal with this. And we have to add 3 times 75 silica to this, so 225. 
but the output of the first two refineries is already 50 plus 25, so 75 silica. And with this, we only have to add another 150 silica, which is, by coincidence, the exact amount that we are producing in our quartz factory that we set up at the very beginning of the series. And currently the silica is just getting synced. We have three industrial containers completely backed up with silica. So I don't think we will need to produce any excess at the moment and in the near future as well. Which is why I decided to bring the whole 150 silica straight to this place and we'll feed it into these foundries. And as soon as we have used up these 28,800 silica in our central storage, we might have to reduce this output or set up another um, silica production if necessary. But I think with almost 30,000 silica, we will be fine for quite some time. And with this, we will have 180 aluminum ingots. And aluminum ingots give us access to either aluminum sheets or aluminum casing. And I think I will split the aluminum ingots up evenly, which leaves us with one constructor converting 90 aluminum ingots into 60 aluminum casing. For example, just here. And then we have 90 aluminum ingots and we have to mix them with 30 copper ingots in order to produce 30 or in this case 90 alclad aluminum sheets per minute in assemblers so we have to put down three assemblers and we have to actually add another smelter to the equation because this main bus will also cover copper ore and bringing 30 over here and this will actually be brought up from this crater here because there are two iron nodes um, that are untapped on a limestone node, I think as well, and an impure copper node. And the conveyor bus that brings the coal currently and the silica later in the future to this place actually goes straight over this crater. So we simply have to extract the, uh, the copper ore, excuse me, and add it to the conveyor bus and bring it here. So it was a very simple solution to get excuse me, wrong one, um, to get copper ingots over here. And now all that's left to do is maybe, maybe here, one, two, three, put down three assemblers for the alkyl aluminum sheets. And then we will feed the ingots over here, the copper ingots over here. And then we have an output of 19 alkyl aluminum sheets per minute and 60 aluminum casings. Now I know that there are alternate recipes that make this process much more efficient, much easier. For example, there's an alternate recipe to create aluminum solution, way easier, and aluminum scrap. I don't have them in my in my head completely, but I worked with them in the in the past. But for now, we are still waiting for update eight for a world exploration tour and blah 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 blah, because we simply want to yeah progress right now and do the fun stuff with alternate recipes later i will make use of this in my big project once update 8 kicks i promise but for now let's work with the standard recipes that we have and with this everybody is also able to copy this very easily and this is basically everything that will happen here and then the output of 90 alclad aluminum sheets and the 60 aluminum casings will be fed up above to the train station. And this is the only thing that I have not thought about yet, aside from cosmetics and foundations and stuff, but I don't know how to bring the output back to the central storage because there's only one train station right there at the moment. And I cannot change the containers too much because it's um, 
tuned to the train that brings rubber and plastic and extracts compacted coal or brings compacted coal to the oil plant. And I cannot change this too much because yeah, this will mess up my current existing plans, but I am not really dedicated to change the central storage in general because I could extend simply the platform where the train station stands on at another one right next to it. But I think what I will actually do is that I... Actually, let's forget this for the moment. Um, I will show you later when we are at the central station what I mean or what I, what I have in my mind. But for now, let me gather all the stuff necessary that uh, is left, for example, for the last refinery, for the logistics, and then I will resume.
All right, you find me already at the Swamp train station and I will show you the final result of the logistics layout of the aluminum factory in a minute. But first of all, we can already tick this off. And now we have to deal with the logistics. And the first thing that we have to do is to get the bauxite to our aluminum factory. And this is why we are now hooking up the two miners that bring out the bauxite to power. And then we will set up the train logistics for this, but only one thing at a time. It looks a little bit messy, but maybe I have the motivation to fix this in the future. Um, do I want a power switch here? I don't think so. Okay, and number two. I'm actually surprised that this does not start because I thought I would have hooked this up to power. Okay, let's finish the logistics first then and then we will see how to deal with this. Okay, after the fourth attempt this worked out. Now let's head upstairs, link this up to the train station and hook it up to power so that we can get the bauxite out of the ground. Now let's see, where did we actually end up? This one, okay, then this should, can, this can go and this can go. Yes. Wait a minute. Wrong one. Alright. And now everything that should be left to do is to hook this power pole up. And then the extractors should start extracting. Or the miners should start mining, I should say. we have to hook up the miners as well. And same on this side. And the bauxite goes up to the train station. So now it's time to set up the actual train. And my idea is to put up a train with two freight cars. Actually three. Um, then I have to double check the aluminum, aluminum factory train station again. If I have set down three 
great platforms, but let's do this for now. This one has to be on load, yes, correctly. And this one brings... Sorry, I had to think a little bit. Okay, this one brings bauxite from the Swamp's bauxite station. Then it heads to the coal coast. And unloads bauxite. And loads... Aluminum casing and alclad aluminum sheet because I have not actually thought about just setting the specific loads and unloads. So basically, we will feed the aluminum casing and the sheet into the same freight platform because the output is not that high, and then we deliver it to the central storage somehow and we'll unload it there and sort it into the two different items again. I think this is a good idea. All right. And I think this is already everything this train has to do. And I didn't save. But I think even though I don't set this, it should work either way because there's only these items available in these stations but it doesn't matter just for the sake of completion and now I think we set this on self-driving and then it should load the box site I can delete this last one in a second can I? Okay, cannot while it's docking and or driving. But let's take the first batch of bauxite with us. Alright, and off we go. And we will actually jump out at the central storage because we have to take care of all the other parts that has to be input into the aluminum factory. So I will see you in a second. Alright, and here we are at the central station again, or the central storage. There goes the box set train and the other one is at the compacted coal site at the moment. Next up, we will take care of our silica, because currently this gets transported up to the main bus and then synced at the central storage. And in order to make more proper use of this, we will actually dismantle this here. And connect it directly to this logistics belt, no clipping, looking good, and now the silica will blow on the other bus. And we can follow that along because we have to take care of more business over here. And you can see I extended these foundations until it meets with the coal. But it will be a separate foundation because I could not fit the additional conveyor belts um, with the coal on one foundation, apart from stacking these on top of each other with stackable conveyor poles. But I simply added another line so it would be simpler. And here we have our impure copper ore. It can actually be underclocked to 50% because we only need 30 copper ore. So let's, whoops, wrong, wrong hotkey bar. Let's hook this up really quick. 
And now it starts extracting the copper ore and we'll bring it to our bauxite or aluminum factory as well. There it comes and it will actually <laughs> take some time but it doesn't matter, we have to do some other stuff as well. And in the meantime I think it will reach the aluminum factory. And the last part or the last resource of this main bus this conveyor bus for aluminum factory is this coal miner. I already upgraded this to a Mark II one and put a power shot in so that we have this overclocked. So let's hook up this one. Everything should be Mark II. And here we have the coal going to our aluminum factory. And with this all the necessary resources will be gathered in a minute so that we can finally start up our production. And as you can see, oh yeah by the way in the time lapse you saw me adjusting this one a little bit, this does not look very satisfying. I have to think maybe for another solution especially because of this clipping. but. This was not aligned and I think my train network is not aligned to the world grid, although I thought I have it, but seems like I was not careful enough. Um, and I think the aluminum factory is now aligned to this train station as well, which does, as, um, and I think because of that it's not aligned to the world grid either, yeah. Does not seem like it, or maybe, I don't know. Either way, it was not fitting properly, so I had to adjust this a tiny little bit, um, so the conveyor belts align, and this is why it looks at this. Uh, it looks like this currently, but I will take care of this in the future and think about a solution. But for now, I simply want to get this up and running. Everything is hooked up to power as well, and we have a power switch over here. The total maximum consumption of this is 231 megawatts. But the water extractors will be overclocked, uh, underclocked, excuse me, soon because we have some power backflow, um, some water backflow from the third refinery along the aluminum scrap. And as soon as our resources will reach this place. Everything should be ready to go. I'm simply wondering why the bauxite has not reached this place yet. Let me check. Is this, uh, I think, yeah, this is not set on unload. And also, I just remember that we actually have to add a third train station to the timetable of this train. But this train station does not exist yet. <laughs> I wanted to show you the central search, but... When we take the 180 degree turn after going behind the central storage and then riding in, there's actually this unused railway at the right angle of the central storage. And I think I will set down another train station over there simply for the aluminum imports so that the um, casings and the alkyl sheets that we produce here can get unloaded over there and then I will add these to the main bus and sort them away along the other parts coming in and I think I, I have to double check again but I think this will not exceed the capacity of the conveyor belts over there but even if it does we will soon very very soon unlock the Mark V conveyor belts and with this um, we will expand our capacity for conveyor belts anyways so this will only be a short-term problem if even. And there comes the box side again. Now let's wait a second and see if this now actually works and this was the only mistake that I have not taken care of.
Yeah, and already the logistics is set up in a way that the casings and the iCloud sheets get fed in into one braid platform. Ah, yeah, it's now unloading. Okay, perfect. And since we will add this to the sorting system, it doesn't matter if it's in one braid platform or in multiple ones, so this is no problem at all. And as soon as we hear the horn, yes, the bauxite should be reaching this place. Oh, the silica is here already. Very nice. So let's jump down again. The coal is here. <laughs> I think the copper will take some more time. Yeah. <laughs> but this was to be expected. Mm, all right. Let's see. The last thing that we actually have to do is hook up these conveyor lifts to the train station. What's the most appealing way? Maybe like this. Maybe like this. Perfect. And now everything that's left to do is wait for the, uh, the copper ore and flip the switch. Maybe I already start right now because uh, these pipelines will fill in, fill up in a second. So there's no point in letting these backlog. By the way, I think I have to scratch the idea of lifting foundations because I underestimated how messy these conveyor belts would be. The only thing that I might be able to do is extend the foundations in a way that these logistics are embedded in the lower level as well. But there's no way that I can reach or um, rise the foundations over here to make this look good. But I will think about this in the future, how this might look and I think I will leave this space very open, not make a complete factory building out of this because we are at the coast and similar to the way um, this coal generator site is designed, I think I will keep this place very open spaced. I think it just fits the scene. I am impatient to wait any longer for <laughs> <laughs> the copper ore, so let's start this place up, shall we? First thing that has to be done is the water extractors has have to work. Soon this should get to work, yes. Creating our first alumina solution. Silica gets transported away, getting it to this line here. Alumina solution and coal getting converted into scrap. And this belt will be actually very full because the huge amount of scrap that will come out here. Scrap and silica getting melted into aluminum ingots. Very nice, very nice. And here our first aluminum casings are produced. Okay, so at least we have this one going. And here comes the copper ore, finally. Now, these casings will be transported up above. Can I change the timetable from this train on the fly? I don't think so.
Now the last process is that this copper ore gets melted into ingots. There we have it. And as soon as this reaches... This is actually not hooked up yet. Okay, but the rest is. Here we have the water backflow already. So I can start underclocking these. Um, we need 270. So we have 90. 90 coming out. To 10. A 60. To 70. Yes. And in an ideal world here, this one should never backlog. I just slightly raised this pipeline on purpose. It, it's the way the water extractors are placed and the level of the foundations. Um, this would have happened anyways, but I'm very glad that these have a little bit of rising. Because now, in my understanding of how fluid works in this game, this water flow should have priority and then we'll add on this one because yeah they have to pump this on up i don't know if i completely misunderstand fluid <laughs> or how this system works but even if there is a backlog in this game um, because water not running properly out of this one we can think about a different solution later but here, we have our first Alclad sheets as well. So everything in this place is running smoothly. Nice, nice, very nice. And this takes care of our aluminum production for the start at least. With this we are able to progress through various milestones as well as take care of <laughs> different productions, additional productions of even more complex parts. And yeah, there's much more to do in the future. But let's see. I think the train just headed off to the swamp again. I will let these back up a little bit wait for the train to arrive here once again, jump in, um, edit the timetable, so, or not edit the timetable, but this one does not need to load. Actually, I could just do that, so the train is unable to load this one, so this one will back up here, and I have a place to pick it up. I will let this stack in this freight platform a little bit, and then we will meet at the central storage again to take care of some milestones and then see if we have time left to do something else. All right, I'm back at the swamps station again and I actually have to postpone the milestones to the next episode because the current one is already going on way too long, so I have to cut it here. The only thing that I wanted to take care of with you really quick is to upgrade this lift to a Mark III one because this tiny end was a little bottleneck because I accidentally set up a Mark II one over here and yeah this was actually affecting the efficiency of everything in this process but I noticed during checking the current um, videos of this episode so yeah just so you know that this is already taken care of but for now i think this has to be it for today i actually need some ideas on how to set up proper supports for the train for the railways i have actually no idea what i could do here other than going with the frame supports that i already have used like these ones maybe um, but if you have any inspiration for me feel free to share I would be very glad 
to get some input and other than that everything that's left to say from my side is thank you very much for watching in the next episode we will make use of the freshly produced aluminum parts and complete some milestones do some further progression and i hope i see you for that again <laughs>